Please to finally answer your question that you've been asking me for the past three years. Yes, I have finished my speech. And here it goes. Every year the bank would come around. I'd always tell my mom, I can't believe this is my fourth to last banquet, or my third to last banquet, or my second to last banquet. But I never truly thought that this banquet would come. The banquet that was talked about for years. The banquet that Barry claims Kleenex is going to sponsor. And most of all, the banquet that is my very last. In the past, I'd watch all the graduating seniors give their speeches, but I could never picture myself actually being the senior, giving the speech, and tonight I am. Not only can I not picture myself up here giving the speech, but it's hard to even imagine my life outside the walls of our day. The late nights and early mornings at the gym, seeing my teammates every day, and a oh, banquet dress shopping with Julia, and of course, various endless amounts of jokes that never failed to make me laugh. <laughs> so where do I even begin? Well, I'll start with from the beginning. At the young age of two years old, my mom, not knowing much about gymnastics, signed me up for my first mommy and me class. She had no idea what the next 16 years of her life would consist of. <laughs> Coming from a family of five, my mom was not very involved in the gymnastics world and wasn't your typical gym mom. She had four other kids to raise, so it was totally up to me how far I would go in this sport. As I continued with classes at RGA, I moved up to preteen and continued along the path to be on the real team. Back in the old days, we started at level five, but I wasn't your typical level five gymnast. While everyone was traveling to Syracuse for the first meet, I was in the gym still trying to get my first kit. Now when I say I was the worst on the team, I mean the worst <laughs> on the team. But a lot of hard work and determination, I went from being one of the worst on a team of 15 girls to the only one here tonight. Yes. After my first kiss, there was a first for everything. My first cast the handstand, my first back handspring, my first full, my first double, my first chenko. You guys get it, gymnastics talk. Then came my first level 10 nationals. This is when I started to realize I had the potential to go far in the sport. When someone asked me the question, what colleges are you looking at? And I thought, college? I was only 14 years old. I didn't even know what college was. Not only did I have to start thinking about college, but I had to start thinking about my future without this gym, one that was completely different from the past 16 years I had spent here. Before I knew it, I was making decisions on where I would spend the next four years of my life as a college student. It was now that I began to see just how far this sport had taken me, how all of my hard work, determination, and hours I had put into this sport were finally paying off. At this point, most of my career was filled with ups. And now we get into the downs. It was my junior year of high school that I began to realize how much I truly love this sport, how much I couldn't live without this sport, and how much this sport meant to me. All because I couldn't have it. I faced the biggest challenge, not only in my gymnastics career, but of my life. And as most of you know, but for those of you know, who don't know, I fractured my hip which led to two major surgeries within two years. So not just any two years, my last two years here at RGA. Now I don't tell you this to gain sympathy. I tell you this because this is the time that I learned the most. As hard and discouraging as this time was for me, being strong was the only option, and the only way I was able to overcome this setback. After my second surgery, I was 99% sure my time competing at RGA was over. Yet there was this part of me that knew this wasn't how I was going to finish my J.O. career, not without one final meet. As I mentioned earlier, I got left behind at what was supposed to be my first meet because I wasn't competition ready. This time, I wasn't so competition ready, ready either, but I was not getting left behind. At my very last day as a senior, ready or not, I saluted one last time to officially end my chapter as an RGA gymnast. It wasn't my greatest meet, but it also felt like the perfect way to sum up my entire gymnastics career and how hard I had worked to go as far as I did. As you all know, gymnastics is not easy. It has its ups, its downs, and everything in between. And if it weren't for a few special people in my life, none of this would have been possible. Now I would like to thank a few who have made it all happen. I'll start with my siblings. It may not appear they have done a lot for me, but their part was crucial including the countless rides to and from the gym that made it all possible for me to get this far. 
Even though some nights he waited up 45 minutes in the parking lot for me to finish practice, then went home complaining to my mom saying you will never pick me up from practice again. I can't thank you enough for doing it all again the next day. Next I want to thank my parents for devoting their entire lives towards my career and supporting me through it all. Especially to my mom who has been there since day one, who has never stopped telling me how proud she was of me, no matter what kind of meat I had. For being my personal hairdresser at every meet because for some reason at 18 years old I still needed my mom to do my hair. And for being there when I succeeded and when I failed. I think we can all agree you are definitely a gym mom now. And being a gym mom has to be one of the hardest jobs in the world. So thank you, Mom, for everything you have done. Now I want to thank all the coaches here at RGA. Each and every one of you has played such a big role in my gymnastics career, spending countless amounts of hours in the gym with me and always pushing me to be my very best. And to my teammates, who have been more than just teammates, but like sisters to me, for always being there for me in and out of the gym, I could not ask for a better team to have by my side supporting me through it all. I also want to thank all the little gymnasts out there. You may not know it, but the little things you say to us is what keeps us going. The small things like, I want to be like you when I'm older, or I wish to be as good as you one day, or simply just watching us try to get a new skill into the gym. It's moments like these that make me take a step back and see how all the difficult times I've been through and all my hard work is inspiring young girls like you. So thank you guys for inspiring me to keep going, to be a role model to younger generations and to be the person they look up to. So I thank my family, I thank my parents, I thank my coaches, and I thank my teammates. But there's two pretty important people out there, or should I say, the two most important that I haven't thanked yet. So my last thank you goes to the two who have made all of this possible, who have turned my dreams into a reality, who have spent long hours in the gym with me, always pushing me to be my very best, who have taught me more than just gymnastics, but life skills that I will use forever, who have taught me that when times get hard, giving up is never an option, and who have always believed in me throughout my 16 years here at RGA. Julia and Barry, saying thank you is an understatement. One speech will never be enough to express how much you both mean to me. And there's a reason why I didn't put you in the coaches category. Because I wouldn't consider you just my coaches, but you have truly been second parents to me. You have been with me through it all, from the best moments of my career to the worst, and of course my most embarrassing moments, like walking off the end of the beam at Nashville. <laughs> <laughs> the gymnast I am today, and the gymnast I will ever be, I owe it all to you both, and I will forever be proud to be one of your gymnasts.